So I just plucked this one off my core pile. It's a 318 and we're getting ready to do uh, a longer term build. This is going to be a pretty hardcore engine when we're done with it. Um, but you know, the 318 is easily the most overlooked, misunderstood engine, not only in the Chrysler lineup, but just in, in the world of V8s, period. The 318 suffers from propaganda more than anything else. And this was done kind of on purpose. When Chrysler first introduced the LA version of the 318, because remember, the 318 was a, was a common polyhead size going back years before that. But in 67, when they put the, the, the 273 heads on the 318 block, they determined from the get-go that it was going to be um, marketed or, or, or positioned where it was going to be the bread and butter V8. It was going to be the basic fleet engine, not so much low performance, but just the bread and butter motor. On the other hand, the 340, from its introduction in 1968, was billed as the performance engine, the performance displacement. So while the 318 never saw, let's say, dual exhaust until 1973 when they put it in the Roadrunner. Never saw a four-barrel carburetor until 1979 or 1980. The 340, from the get-go, had the higher flow cylinder heads, higher compression pistons, had a windage tray, uh, dual valve springs, four-barrel intake always on the 340. The 340 was designated to be the performance version and the 318 the bread-and-butter version. But let me show you something. You see that? That gap right there, that's 130 thousandths of an inch. And from a functional perspective, that is the only difference between a 318 and a 340. That 130 thousandths of an inch in bore size makes up the 22 cubic inch difference. From a functional standpoint, that's it. That's what separates a 318 from a 340. And because of that, the propaganda has always been to play down the 318. It's always considered to be the dog of the, of the Chrysler V8 family. From the get-go, like I said, the 318 was always had a two-barrel intake. It always had a single exhaust. It always had low compression. The camshaft, the cams that they, they put in the 318s, was like 390 lift, like 210 degrees of duration, like like 114 degree lobe separation, like really low performance stuff. And that stuck, but people never really bothered to look into the guts of the 318. What is the potential of the 318? Well, the truth of the matter is there is nothing you can do with a 340 that you can't do with a 318. So what I want to do is I want to go year by year, right? And let's cover the evolution of the 318, the LA motor from 1967 until the Magnum was introduced. The Magnum is its own engine. It's still a 318, yeah, I get that. But it doesn't really fall into this, you know, this range. What can you do with a 318, with an LA 318? An engine that you can pick up literally almost anywhere for scrap price, 25 bucks, 50 bucks. Here, come and get this thing out of my shed. 318s are still, still a dime a dozen. And they offer, honestly, the biggest bang for the buck that you're gonna find in the world of Mopar performance. So, let's talk about the, the differences, the main, the main differences between the 318 and the 340 first. So, obviously, there's the bore size, 130 thousandths of an inch bore. The 318 is 3.91 inch bore, the, the 340 starts off at four inch plus 40. Aside from the displacement, the, the bore, the 318 uses a slightly smaller main cap, right? It's slightly shorter, but it's the same width, it's the same construction, it's the same material. The 340 also has, along with the 360, and we're not going to talk about the 360 in this video either. The 360 is a, its own whole separate engine. The 340 and 360 have 
a wider lug here on the driver's side motor mount. And that's because under extreme use, Chrysler engineers felt that there would be distortion in this area right here of the deck. So they made the boss a little bit wider to spread the load. But in actuality, there's never really been a problem along these lines. And if you use like a torque strap, you know, a, a torque limiting thing, you'll never have that issue. So those, that's it. From, from a structural standpoint, the block is the same. They have the same saddles, they have the same water jackets, they have the same everything. The difference is only in the bore size and those other small things. Um, now also, wait, we'll talk about cylinder heads in a little bit. So, motor is introduced in 1967. And you know, ironically enough, they introduced the 318 in 67, and the high performance small block was still the 273. So if you wanted a bread and butter engine, it was 318. You wanted a hot rod motor, it was a 273. The 340 didn't come along until 68. So, from 1967, the, the 318 used a steel crank, a four steel crank, actually the first three years, 67, 68, 69, used a four steel crank and it used these 273 connecting rods. The 340 and the truck version of the 318, the 318-3, if you come across the 318 and on the side of the block it says 318 with a dash and a 3, it came with these 340 connecting rods, which are the same as the later ones except they're bushed for a floating pin. So essentially, if you've got a 318-3 motor from those years, 67, 68, 69, it's a 340 bottom end. The crankshaft is interchangeable. The stroke is the same between a 318 and a 340, 3.31 inch, and the rod center to center length is 6.123. Actually, in all small plug Mopars, 6.123 center to center. Beginning in 1972, all 318s regardless of what they were stamped on the side, got the 340 rod. So, if you talk, now they went to a cast crank in 70, but that cast crank is still internally balanced just like a 340, or the earlier steel crank 318s. The same, the same stroke, the same material, balanced slightly differently, but for eons, people have been swapping between 273, 318, and 340 steel cranks and all these different combinations and never really had any balance issues. If you're super anal retentive about it, then yeah, you can have it balanced. If you're going to see extended high RPM, over 6,000 RPM, then yeah, definitely have it balanced. But I can tell you absolutely firsthand, from you know practical use experience, you can take a 340 crank, steel crank, throw it on a cast 318 short block, and just send it. They run fine no balance issues. Um, all right, so that's the bottom end. Now, well, it's not all at the bottom end. All 318s were low compression motors from the get-go. 1967, 1968, 69, they used a closed chamber 273 cylinder head, which is a, a really nice cylinder head. It actually has one of the nicest exhaust ports out of all of the small block Mopar heads, the factory small block Mopar heads. The compression ratio on those early motors, 67, 68, 69, was nine and a quarter to one. 1970, they went to an open chamber head, and it's a, the most common head you're going to come across on a 318, and that's this one right here. So it's an open chamber head with the pistons the same, same, same distance down the hole because they didn't change the piston height, but they went to the open chamber. The compression dropped to eight and a half to one. So. This is the basic 318 head. All 318s, all production 318s, LA motors, had the same 1.5 inch, 1.50 exhaust valve and the same 1.78 intake valve. Now by comparison, the LS, the everybody's darling, has a 1.58, 1.57, 1 1.58 exhaust valve and a 1.5. 1.79 or 1.80 uh, intake valve. That's the 5.3. The 5.3 5 LS also has a smaller bore than the 318. So people are like, oh, well, it's you know, it's, it's under a four-inch bore. It's junk. You know, it's got small valves. It's junk. No, they're playing with engines today, modern engines that have essentially the same architecture as these earlier engines do. All right. So this is the basic standard 318 LA cylinder head. 
this one here is the basic standard 360 head, 340, 360 head. Now in 1968, 69, 70, the 340 used what they called an X head, which is the same basic casting as the later 340, 360 head, but has a 202 intake instead of the 188. It has a, an also it has a, a 1.60 exhaust valve. You can open the 318 head to fit the 1.6 and the 1.88 intake valves from the 360, 340, 360 head. You can take, I don't know, a lot of guys right away they want to put a 360 head on the 318. The problem you run into with that is that the 360 head has a slightly deeper combustion chamber. So when you drop a 360 head on a stock piston 318, you end up with compression down in the 7.8 to 1 range or thereabouts. What they don't realize, what these people don't realize, is that you can take the stock 318 head and port it to the same dimension as the stock 340, 360 head. There's, there are slight differences in the casting, like for instance, set this up so you can see. So here's apples to apples. And you can see that the 340, 360 head has a slightly taller casting on the intake side than the 318 head. What that means is that you can take the 318 head and port it to the stock size of the 340, 360 head. But you can't go past that. Now, today you've got so many different heads on the market, so many different affordable aftermarket heads, aluminum heads. Uh, that it, and, and it, you can't underestimate the value of a modern aluminum cylinder head on one of these engines. But a lot of you guys like to work with these stock parts, so you just don't have the scratch to drop eight hundred, a thousand dollars on a set of cylinder heads. So you're going to work with the stock LA heads. A better choice than putting the bigger chamber 340, 360 head is to put the larger valves, the 360, 188, and 1.6 valves into the. 318 head and just port it, get yourself a, a rotary grinder and just port it out, gasket match it to the stock 318 or the stock 340, 360 size. Trust me, it works. The engines turn on like crazy. Um, again, like I said, the 318 suffers from propaganda because it was always marketed as the low performance engine. It was always marketed as the fleet motor, the bread and butter motor. And people, just myself included, everybody buys into that. The 318 is the dog. But that's not the case. The 318, there's nothing you can do with a 340 that you can't do with a 318. I think I covered all of the bases of it. Um, yeah, for the most part. So the motor I just pulled off the, uh, the, the, the core pile, that's actually going to be the good motor for bottle rocket. The one that's in there now is just a mule. And this is, we have $12 in that, in that long block. And the, the, the block, crank, rods, all of that stuff, and the cylinder heads. It's got 12 bucks in that motor because it's a mule. It's supposed to be blown up so we can figure out which, what the weak point is on it. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to scatter that engine early this year as soon as the tracks get going and, and we start racing these things. Uh, but that, the motor I pulled off the core is going to get, or the core motor is going to get aluminum heads, it's going to get a steel crank, um, pistons. The rest of it is kind of a blank slate yet. i got to see how things evolve with it. But uh, there will be lots of 318 stuff coming up, you know, in the future. So that's it. If you've got one of these engines, it's not scrap. It has more potential than you can imagine. Just, uh, you know, do your homework, choose the right parts. See you tomorrow.